Hello and welcome back to Chemistry It Is All That Matters and today we're going to continue with the gas laws and we're going to look at our final gas law which is Graham's law and Graham's law deals with how fast gases will move through a closed system um, based on the diffusion of the gas and the effusion of the gas being introduced into a closed system. So let's look at how Graham's law works. So with Graham's law, what we're looking at is we're comparing rates of the movement of gases. So we have R1, the rate of the first gas, over R2, the rate of the second gas, is equal to the square root of the molar mass of the second gas divided by the molar mass of the first gas. So mm2 represents the molar mass of the second gas, and molar mass mm1 is the molar mass of the first gas. Now remember gases move at different velocities based upon their molar masses. Lighter gases move faster. So what we're looking at is a closed system where we introduce gases and we want to know where are these gases going to meet? Where are they going to begin mixing based on their rates of change? So as the gases move through the system, where in this system will the gases combine? So let's look at a sample of this and here we have helium gas and propane gas being released into separate glass tubes of the same length. If the helium takes four seconds to reach the end of the tube, how long will it take for the propane to reach the end of that same length tube? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the molar masses of those two gases. And helium, of course, from the periodic table, we get four grams per mole. And propane, we have to calculate three times 12 and eight times one to get a mass of 44 grams per mole for the helium. So helium, we are told, has a rate of four seconds through the tube, and propane has a rate of, that's basically what we're looking for. So the ratio of the rates are determined by the formula for Graham's Law, R1 over R2 equals molar mass of 2 divided by molar mass of 1, and you take the square root of that value. So R1 over R2 equals 44 over 4 square root, R1 over R2 equals the square root of 11, so R1 over R2 has a ratio of 3.32. Now, because we know the helium takes 4 seconds, and helium is the faster gas because it is the lighter gas, we know that that 4 seconds has to be multiplied by the ratio, 3.32, to give us 13.28 seconds for the propane to travel that same length of the tube. So, let's do a second sample, and under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, how many times faster will hydrogen effuse compared to carbon dioxide? So, we look up carbon dioxide and we find that the carbon dioxide mass is 44 grams per mole. Hydrogen, remember hydrogen is diatomic, so even though the periodic table says 1.01, .01, we need to take it as H2, making it 2.02. .02. So this value comes out to be R1 over R2 has a rate of 4.7, a ratio of 4.7. So if the carbon dioxide takes 32 seconds to effuse, how long will it take the hydrogen? Well, the hydrogen is the lighter gas. So when we look at this calculation, we need to actually take the 32.0 seconds and divide it by 4.7, the ratio of change and we see that in this case it's going to take the hydrogen only 6.8 seconds to travel the length of those tubes or to travel through that process. So when we are looking at Graham's Law, remember we are finding a ratio of the rates, R1 over R2, and that ratio of the rates is based on the molar masses of the gases inverted. So it's the molar mass of 2 over the molar mass of 1, and you take the square root of that value to get the ratio of rate change. So those were two examples of using Graham's Law, and you need to keep working on your chemistry.